So we had quite a storm last night and this Torbay palm has had quite a lot of its dead leaves brought down onto the ground by the high winds. And this material's really fibrous and tough. And I think we can make something out of this. So I'm gonna gather all of these up and we'll take it home and I'm gonna see if I can make a basket out of these Torbay palm leaves. So I've actually got really quite a large amount of material here to work with. So let's actually have a look at the properties of these fronds. They splay out and they're broad in the middle and tapered at both ends. They've got actually quite a thick and tough and woody end here. So I'm definitely gonna have to cut off part of the frond, I think, at this end. And there's, there is still a bit of flexibility there. So I think what we'll do is we'll try splitting these into strands like that. They do seem to come apart into nice tough strands. And just to test how strong this is, that's gonna cut my fingers before it actually snaps. It really, really is tough stuff. So I've got no problem at all believing that this will be quite a good material for making baskets. So let's just see how it splits up. I think what we'll do is we'll just pull it apart into bands like this and then we can decide on whether we're going to strip off the woody bits at the end here like this to make that a little bit more pliant. So I reckon out of each frond I'm probably going to get four strips. I may end up having to weave this with wearing gloves because it's actually really quite a tough and wiry material and I can see myself getting cuts on the fingers from this stuff but anyway let's just process a few more and then we can decide what it's actually going to be like So I had a bit of an initial experiment to try to make baskets with this material and it's a little bit stiff and wiry to work with. It was okay but it was just a little bit badly behaved because it was so stiff and springy. So what we're going to try is soaking it just for a little bit. So I put all the pieces in this big container of water and we'll just press it down like that and we'll leave it to soak for a few hours. It doesn't just need to be wet down, it actually needs for the water to soak right into the fibres. And then it hopefully will become a little bit more soft and supple and maybe not quite so brittle. So we'll give that a try. Okay, so that's been soaking for probably about an hour now and we can see why it needs an extended soak. That piece has been completely underwater and yet you can see the water has only actually made it about halfway into the material itself. So we're going to give that a complete soak until it turns colour and you, I can already feel that that piece there is very much softer on that side. So when it changes colour and goes dark then I guess I'll know that it's properly soaked and it should be much more pliable and easy to work. Okay so I took all of those pieces of fibre out of the water and I've put them in a plastic bag because I don't want them to absolutely soaking wet. 
but we can see that's very much more pliable and flexible than it was when it was dry. So let's get started with our basket. Now the table's wet from just drained water, but that's not a bad thing. That will help to keep everything damp. Now I don't want to be soaking wet here, but it's, at the same time I don't want to be bone dry either. So we need to choose, I think we'll have five pieces in either direction. So we'll have five stakes in both directions. So let's just choose some nice pieces. I'll just bring the camera around over here so you can see what I'm up to. That's good. Right, so what we're going to do, these have got a thin end, the tip end, and a thick end, which is the butt end. So I'm going to alternate. So turn around half of my stakes. So I've got butt, tip, butt, tip, butt. Okay, get them more or less level. And then I'm going to do the same with the stakes going this way. So we'll start with one that's going like this. So, what I need to do, I'll hold down my stakes like this, and I will lift the first, the third, and the fifth in a line, and I will lay down that other stake there. Now that looks a right mess at the moment, but don't worry. Now I'm going to take my next stake the other way round, so this time the tip pointing away from me, and this time I'm just going to lift the second and the fourth and then lay down my, my next stake there and you can see that the basket weave base is already starting to form. Now I'm just going to hold my finger down tight on that and then I'm going to bend up the, the ones I did in the first place which is the first, the third and the fifth take my next stake, this time butt end away from me, and lay it down in there. Okay, it's starting to look okay. Might need a little bit of a tighten up at the end. Okay, and then again my second and fourth stakes. My next stake on that direction, and lay those down. So you can see that's starting to form a base. So what we need to do now is quickly get some weaving on top of that to tie that in. So we'll take one of these pieces here and we will take it about a third of the way along its length like that. And we're gonna hook it around our first stake like so. And then we'll start from the left. We're gonna go over this stake under the next. and pull it in. And now the stake we just went over, so that one's going to go over this stake and under the next. There we go, and then the first one we did over the stake, under the next one, and then the last one over the stake, and under that corner one. And now we go around the corner, and I'm going over this stake under that one. And over that stake and under that one. Okay, now that's tied in. You can see that edge there. It's now tied in. So as I go around here, I'm going to start to pull this tight and bind this all together nice and tight. But we're going to run out of material here in a minute. So I'll show you how to join on another one. But first we will go over this stake, oops, not get ourselves twisted up, and under the next, like so. And then this one will go over there and under the next. Now joining on, what will we do is we, we've got a thin piece, a, we've got a short piece and a long piece. We just get ourselves another piece of weaving material 
and we bend it like that so that that short piece is about the same length as this short piece but we're not going to match up the short pieces we're going to match up the long with the short so we'll go actually no I need to go back one so we're going to match that up with we're going to match up the, the long piece with the short piece and vice versa so we're going to go around the back of this stake here and then that short piece has got that long piece to continue and this long piece here is going to work out the rest of that short piece so let's just get ourselves sorted so we're going to go that piece has gone over this piece is next so it's going to go over that stake and under that one it's a little bit messy at the moment but it once this once this base piece is all tied in it will tidy itself up a lot now let's not lose our place so we've got that one that one which needs to go over this stake and under that one so that's gone over that and under that yeah so that's going to go over that stake and under that one and that will then start to pull in this corner as well and then we just carry on so we've still got several pieces working together here but we will just go over this stake and under the next and this one goes over that and under the middle one And this is where we get to pull it a little bit to bind it all close together. Now we don't need to worry too much about little bits sticking out like that. We will trim them off at the end. So that now we just carry on weaving. And all we're really doing every time is alternating. With, we're crossing over the weavers back and forth around the stakes. Now we're going round for the second time now, so an interesting thing starts to happen. What we can do here is as we go round this corner, we're going to pull that tight and we're just going to work these stakes out into a radial, a bit more of a radial pattern. And also the one on this side, we're just going to place it where we want it to be, like that. And that will enable us to weave a round basket rather than a square one. Right, so it's time to join on again. So we'll take another short, we'll take another weaver. We'll go for the thin end here and we'll match that against the longer end there. Loop it over there like so. And then we've got a long piece and a short piece are the next to go over. And around the back of that stake there. Now that we've got everything quite established and it's starting to weave around, it's a lot easier to find it's a lot easier to find your way and all we're really doing is taking the one around the back and then the other one around the back, like so. We're just alternating these weavers around the back of the next stake. And that's what all we've been doing all along. It's just now that it's actually a bit more evident and visible. So now we're going to join on another piece here. So we're going to go onto that piece there. Oh, Eva, shut up.
Well, there we go. So it is possible to weave baskets. It's not a very pretty basket, actually. So I think we might just stop there and maybe we'll do something else with this material. It's not making a very neat and tidy basket, probably because this material is just too uneven. Proof of concept, I suppose it is possible to make a basket out of this material. It's extremely tough and strong, but never mind. That's There you go. That's how you make a paired woven basket. Well, I think while we're here, we'll just look at some other things we might be able to do with this material. So let's just have a look. Let's just take two strands and see if we can make cord out of this. So we'll get two strands here and tie a knot, just an overhand knot in one end. And to make cord, all we do is we twist one strand and then bring it round over the top of the other and then twist that away from me and bring it over the top towards me. So twist the strand and bring it back, twist the strand and bring it back. There's quite a lot of water squeezing out of this, it's not really ideal. So as I say, I'm just twisting away from myself, clockwise motion, on the strand that's at the back and then bringing it over the top towards me and then again <coughs> twisting away from myself and over the top. So I'm, I'm actually we, I'm winding the threads around each other in the opposite direction to which they're twisted and that causes them to lock against each other really very tightly. And it makes a very, very strong and attractive cord. It's just a little bit wet at the moment where I've soaked it. But we'll see how good that is when it's dried out. It might be that it loses a little bit of its integrity when it dries out because it might shrink. However, that shrinkage may actually make it tighter. We just don't know. very strong piece of cord. And I'm about to run out of material here so I'll show you how we lay in a new piece. Right so this bit here is starting to get a bit thin and weedy so we're going to lay in a new piece now, this bit here, and all we have to do is actually just lay it on top of that strand, like that, and then combine it in and twist those pieces together. And then this piece can be trimmed off when, it's, when the cord is finished. So what, it gives you cramp in the hands right here, making this cord if you're not used to doing it. I imagine if you get lots of practice, you probably toughen up and your hands will get used to it. So I think we'd probably just stop right there. And tie that off. And that cord, couldn't break that if I tried. <clears throat> and that's just made from two of these strands of Torbay palm leaf. So there we go guys, so that's my attempt at making a basket out of Torbay palm strands and that's how to make cord out of the same material or indeed any fibrous material. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you again soon.